Hey guys, it's Mrs. Kleinley with this week's First Chapter Fridays. This week, we're going to be looking at Towers Falling by Jewel Parker Rhodes. If you haven't read any of Jewel Parker Rhodes' books yet, you are really in for a treat. She writes in just such a beautiful, beautiful way. Um, so this book is a realistic fiction book because it's set in modern time, even though it talks about a historical fiction event, which is uh, the tragedy of September 11th. So our book is about a fifth grader whose name is Deja, who her dad has always been a little off and she doesn't quite understand why, what's wrong with him. He's a little, she just knows like something's not right with her father. Um, the family is going through a tremendous financial hardship. They're actually living in a homeless shelter, um, in New York city and, uh, you don't really know initially like why, how they ended up in that situation, what's going on with the family. And then by the end of the story, the pieces of the puzzle all kind of make sense. So um, without giving too, too much away, her father was involved in the events of September 11th and as a result has since suffered some uh, severe uh mental health issues because of him being part of that tragedy. And as a result of he's physically has issues, he mentally has issues going on. And as a result, he's really truly not able to hold a job down. Some of the reasons why the family is having such financial difficulties. So Deja is assigned um, a school project about September 11th because it's the anniversary of September 11th. So as she's going through the process of researching and learning more about the um, events that happened that day, she kind of starts to put the pieces of the puzzle together and understanding why her dad is the way that he is. So um, I'll jump right into our very first chapter, which is called New School. Pop groans. He's having bad dreams again. I hear Ma trying to comfort him. My little sister Alita squirms. I whisper, hush, sleep, and tuck the sheet beneath her chin. We share a bed. She turns on her side. Her feet kick my knees. On the floor, Raymond's arm clutches his pillow. He sleeps through anything. I never do. Even when we weren't living in one room, I heard Pop's nightmare groans, heard him and Ma arguing about money, arguing that he needed to get a job. Pop didn't get a job. Ma's waitress job barely covers food, and we ended up here, Avalon Family Residence. It sounds nice, but it's not. Peeling paint, cockroaches, and no water, refrigerator, or stove in our tiny room. We're squeezed together like rats, five people in a room instead of one or two. No sense complaining, Ma always says, but it makes me want to burst, hit, or break something. I'm the oldest. I've got to be responsible, and I hate it. I've got to get Raymond and Lita ready for daycare and watch them afterward. Pop doesn't do anything. After his bad dreams, he stands on the street corner. He doesn't talk with other out-of-work men. He freezes like no one else exists. When his head aches fierce, he has to lie down. Nobody is allowed to even whisper or move, but his cough is worse. Sometimes he can't breathe, like he's got asthma or something. I pat Lita's head, sleeping. She looks like a baby princess, but I don't tell her that. Eyes closed, I grimace. I wish I could sleep and have no worries like her. Today, I start my new school. I worry if I'll like it. I worry if anyone will like me. Last year, even my best friend Keisha stopped speaking to me when my family became homeless. Like it was my fault. Like I was going to give her germs or something. Like my family and me were just trash. Ma shakes me. She thinks I'm asleep. In the shelter, even when I'm awake, I sometimes keep my eyes closed. What I see makes me angry. Sad looking people. Nice, but sad. Some creepy people too. I'm not used to eating with thieves in a gross cafeteria or passing them in narrow halls where they try to jump you, steal your shoes or money. I walk the halls with fists ready. Deja, mom says softly. Here, a pink ribbon sways like a snake above my face. Ma knows I don't like pink, but she must have found the ribbon or bought it cheap. Thanks. You get ready now. I'll take Ray and Lita to daycare. You'll be late for work. Better than you being late for your first day of school. She doesn't smile. I don't remember the last time Ma smiled. She's always tired with dark smudges beneath her eyes. I'm not sure I want to go to school. School doesn't help with real life. Double worse? Pop should get up 
but he doesn't. He tosses and turns, entangling the sheets. Pop's never any help. With my work, I'm the one to tell Ray and Lita there's no money for ice cream when the Mr. Softy truck chimes. No clothes without patches. No Nickelodeon. Our TV was sold months ago. All right, guys. So again, our book this week is found in our realistic fiction section. And I just think there's so many wonderful things about this book. It's an intense book. I definitely would recommend this book for more for our fourth and fifth graders. Um, I probably wouldn't go any younger than that because it is deep. It's heavy. You know, other than better understanding some of the effects and impacts of September 11th and other events that people have had tragedies, um, it also shows us that I, I say this a lot, but you never know what people are going through outside of school, outside of your friends group, outside of your sports team. Some of you and some of us and people in the world are handling some topics that and some things in their lives that you just can't even begin to think about. So that's why I say give people the benefit of the doubt. You have no idea what other things they have going on in their life. So just always lead with kindness. This book really kind of shows us how important that is. So I hope you enjoy. Happy reading.